This sermon this morning is probably one of the more challenging sermons I've had to uh, give to you as a congregation in a long time. And it is challenging because of the challenging situation we are going through right now in the United States and the rest of the world. We have the pandemic going on, but then in the last two or more weeks, we've uh, seen um, the, the difficult time that that people are having in this country and, and in other parts of the world as a result of the death of George Floyd. Uh, we've read about his death now um, in the newspapers, we've seen it on television, and we've seen the crowds responding to his death all over the place. And so I want to begin by um, uh, reminding us that we all have experiences of being in crowds, right? Uh, in the malls, on the beaches, at sporting events, and in many other situations. We know what it feels like to be in crowds. Right now, uh, because of the pandemic, uh, we, uh, we may have forgotten what it feels like, but we know what it means to be in crowds. And, and now we see uh, it's in our faces. We see how uh, there are crowds and crowds and crowds of people out there um, uh, speaking their, their, what is in their hearts, speaking out uh, the emotions that are so hard to, to observe. We also know what it means to have compassion when it comes to our children and our family and our loved ones. We know how to respond. We know what it means to care for those close to us. And so in our passage, we read about a crowd and we also read about Jesus's compassion. So let's first have a look at compassion in the message of and, and the ministry of Jesus. The concept of Jesus' compassion can best be understood in the commandment that we find in the Bible, love God and love neighbor as yourself. Uh, it is a commandment that has been given to folks in the Old Testament and also to the early church in the New Testament and to all of us today as individuals and also as the church. And so Jesus' life is all about love for God and love for neighbor. His message is about compassion, and it can be seen in the way he lived his life out and also in the, the parables that he told his disciples, and, and, and especially those who challenged him, like the lawyer in the story of the Good Samaritan who asked Jesus, what must I do to enter eternal life? What is it that you would tell me? And then Jesus tells him the story of the Good Samaritan, of the wounded person on the road to Jericho, the ones who passed by, and then the person who stopped, helped him, and, and took him to be taken care of. And at the end of that story, Jesus tells this lawyer who's challenging him, I want you to consider it. And perhaps if you want to understand what it means to be a good neighbor, go and do the same. Go and do the same towards the wounded and the ones who need help. But more, Jesus' compassion can especially be seen in the Sermon on the Mount, where he outlines the expectations of, of what he wanted his disciples to, to do and how he were to live themselves out um, uh, is, is written in the Sermon of the Mount and how he speaks uh, to them in Matthew and also in Luke. They must regard themselves blessed or happy when they cry, when they go through difficult circumstances. They who mourn will be comforted. Those who are humbled, uh, not arrogant, are blessed. Those who are hungering for righteousness, for what is right and what is just, must deem themselves happy and blessed. Why? Because they will receive it. They will receive uh, the change that will come. They must know that God sees their circumstances, that God has compassion, and that God will change those situations that they're in. And that's why they must see themselves blessed. And so Jesus' compassion we see in the way he lived and the way he taught, the way he challenged those who looked at him uh, as 
somebody who was just walking around. He, his life was filled with love and compassion. And so in our Matthew passage, we see Jesus sending his disciples out for a specific mission. They were to go out, make disciples of those in Israel first, and tell them about the kingdom of heaven. They would be sent out to the nations later, other nations, as we spoke about last week in that sermon. And the context of that mission that he is sending them out is what we found, find in the verse verses 35 to 37. And you've followed with, with Janice as she was reading those um, those verses to us. And I want to read for you especially verse 36. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Jesus, who was busy preaching in many villages, noticed something about the crowds who were following him. We know that he always had crowds as he was doing his, his ministry on earth. He was always sensitive to anyone in need, anyone who would touch him and who would stop. He would stop and ask, what is it that, that, that you need? Who touched me? And then he would respond to that person by doing a miracle or healing them. Time and time again, he would be filled with emotion and that emotion would prompt Jesus to action and do something about the pain that he saw. Matthew tells us that he saw something in the crowds and he had compassion on them in verse 36. It says they were harassed and helpless, says one commentary. Additional research on this particular text talks about them being oppressed, exhausted, and that they had a lack of direction. They were like sheep without a shepherd. When he saw them in their distress, he needed to do something about it. And the best translation for his compassion I found was when it says, Jesus' heart went out to the crowd. He was filled with an emotion so strong he was so captivated by what he saw that he called for help. And it's then when he tells his disciples that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. The harvest, the harvest was this crowd of people in distress. This crowd who was oppressed and helpless, they were the harvest. They needed help. They needed leaders. They needed a shepherd. To take care of them. He says that they are not enough workers. I need you to pray to God to send out the right people to go into the crowds and bring them in, take care of them. Jesus did not hesitate after he saw the crowd in distress. He saw what was needed and took the appropriate action. He called his disciples to, to him in, in verses, the first few verses in chapter 10. And then he gave them the authority to heal the sick, to raise the dead, drive out deacon, de demons, and much more. He empowers them to what they needed to do, and then they will go out into the villages to bring a message of hope and of change. He goes on, he says, I want you to travel light. I want you to go into the homes of people bring them peace, and they need to know that this divine message would not be received by, by everyone that they will encounter because of the content of that message. The content of the message that the disciples had to convey was love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Elsewhere in Matthew, Jesus says, I love justice, I love mercy and faithfulness. And in another passage, he says, I love mercy, not sacrifice. 
it is not an easy message to tell those who oppressed these same crowds who followed Jesus, who were in distress. It was a mission fraught with danger. They will speak to ordinary people and they will also speak to governors and kings and Gentiles, we read about in chapter 10. They will give testimony about this Jesus and the works he did and his message of loving God and love neighbor as yourself. They would have to defend that. And when they do that, they will be hated and persecuted because the message they would bring is about this Jesus and the values he wanted to bestow on the world, the values of compassion and love and justice and mercy. These disciples who are on this mission would go against the leaders of the day who may not have the same compassion as Jesus had. They may not wanted to see they may not have wanted to see the change that Jesus wanted to say see for the people and these crowds in distress. What a task. What a challenge. So we too have crowds today. Do we not? I do not have to tell you that we have crowds all over the country and all over the world today. These are the crowds with messages of pain, of, of distress, of, of anger. These are crowds with needs that need to be heard and need to be met. As I said before, we switch on the TV, we read the newspapers, we go online and there are the crowds. We cannot ignore them. We, the, the gruesome death of George Floyd and the deaths of many others have led to, to us seeing crowds and crowds of people in the streets filled with so much emotion. They cannot sit in their homes and be quiet about what is happening, even during the danger of a pandemic. That kind of emotion is deep and it needs to come out somehow. So we let us agree that there are good police, police officers who care for us and who care for the work they are called to do, right? Because it has to do with a white police officer who killed this black man and and there are a few more who were part of that. We must agree that there are those who are good police officers, who care for what they do, who care for you and who care for me. But we now know that what happened to George Floyd brought out the crowds in the thousands. Crowds with pain, crowds with anger, crowds with mixed emotions. I too was part of crowds in South Africa during apartheid when we as people of color were oppressed as well. I too as a seminary student joined my fellow seminarians and pastors and leaders and thousands of others who went out into the streets to say we need justice, we need change, we are in pain, our message need to be heard. So I know what it means to be in a crowd that is in distress. I saw the change happen then when Nelson Mandela and others were released and we were filled with joy and we felt that sense of freedom that our skin did in fact matter. I have seen how Madiba, who we called Mandela Madiba, how he brought us together and spoke to us and how he healed our wounds, black and white. I found myself as a person with, a, with full humanity then, who have been healed. Whereas for many, many years, I was damaged 
by the system who did not look at me as a full human being. And so maybe some of you have been part of your own crowds as well, saying no to the injustices. Maybe some of you were part of the crowds now or during the 60s or whenever you needed to, to raise your voice. Also, in my mediation and reconciliation work for the last 27 years, I have worked with thousands of people in South Africa, in the US, and all around the world. I have worked with small and large groups. I've seen lots of pain and anger and distress. And I had the opportunity to dig into the reasons why people were so angry and so unhappy in their distress. They would let me in and I would see their pain. And I was filled with deep compassion for what they were going through. And I would say to them, let's come together. Let's listen to what, what the other is saying and let us find a way out of this place of anger and distress. I've worked with leaders in churches and in workplaces with, with so many groups. And I have learned that when the things that cause the pain, when those things have not been resolved, that the situation cannot be changed. I've learned that it can only be changed when we are being heard, when the pain is being seen, when the pain is being recognized, and then for things to change. There are all kinds of crowds, small and large. They are made up of all kinds of people with all kinds of needs and concerns and emotions. And also there are those with agendas who come into the crowds and upset the crowds when they just want to let those know that we are not happy. So we know all of that. And as I was thinking about it, I, I was wondering what Jesus' reaction would be today if he were to be among the crowds. What would his message be? How would he react since he is always filled with compassion what would he do? And so as a person of color, I've been affected by what has happened now in the United States. And as a pastor, I feel called to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, listening, seeing, and feeling the compassion myself. I feel the need to preach about the, the, the need for racial justice and change and healing and transformation. The pain and anger we see ultimately affect us all as individuals and as a church. And so I offer these thoughts for all of us to reflect on how Jesus Christ, as he saw that crowd in Matthew and how he felt the compassion and how he called his disciples to go out and do and speak and even if they were to uh, get themselves into trouble, that they were to speak about love for God and love for neighbor, for all our neighbors. And so I, I offer this sermon to you, to myself, myself. Let us reflect on how Jesus Christ is speaking to us, to all of us, and how Jesus Christ's compassion inspire us as individuals and as a community of faith during a time like this. May God speak to our hearts. May God give us wisdom in how to respond in ways that will be to God's glory, that will be to God's glory, and for the healing of this country, for our communities, and for this world. May God help us, and may God give us peace. Let us go forth, and let us have compassion as Jesus wants us to have. Amen.